Hello and welcome. My name is Cullen and you're on board my 1978 Chris Craft Corinthian Big News. Underneath me are two 454 big block engines. One of them works perfectly, the other one was running on 7 out of 8 cylinders. You can watch these videos to find out more about discovering problems with this engine. In this video, we're going to fix every single problem. And that's saying a lot. So, let's get right into it. Let's pull up this sole. Yeah, it's not that easy. Damn it. Whew. Let's get to work on that thing. This is only day one of who knows how many. Just bear with me. We're taking things one step at a time. Right now, the first step I need to do is to pull the camshaft out. Now this is my first time doing anything like this. I will make mistakes and I will learn from them. If you see anything that I miss, please put a comment down below. I read every single one and I promise they have saved me so many times. We've got to figure out how to get that camshaft out. What I think I'm going to start with is taking these belts off. Then I'm going to have to pull off these pulley wheels and the water pump housing that's gonna to have to go too. Underneath there, I think there's going to be the timing chain and gears. That's where my experience falls off. It's gonna be very interesting to see what actually goes on underneath this cover. I'm probably gonna to have to turn the engine by hand to get it to a certain timing mark before I pull that chain and gears off. Hopefully it'll be clearly marked and easy enough to get that in the right position before I take it all off. I'm gonna be taking that part very slowly, very carefully, very methodically. Trust me, I'm not gonna rush this. All right, these belts are pretty fun. You've gotta loosen up the water pump uh, mount so you can get this white belt off. And then you gotta loosen up the alternator to get this black belt off. Now it actually looks like I could take this entire water pump housing off without taking the wheel off. I'm gonna try that first. separating big pieces of cast iron from other pieces of cast iron. I feel kind of like Sam from Lord of the Rings. Every step I take is the furthest I've ever gone. I had no clue what to expect under here. There's another cover over the chain. That's gonna need to come off. This marker right here is gonna have something to do with the timing. That big cutout is zero. It goes up to 16 before and four after. I don't know exactly where I need to put this. I'm gonna consult the manual. This is the manual, and this is the valve cover. Both of them say eight degrees before top dead center is the right place for this engine. So that's where it's gonna be. I'm gonna try to turn this engine over by hand to see how difficult it is. I wanna get a feeling for what it's like. Ooh, it's making like gurgling noises. All right, doesn't look like a whole lot has happened, but I have pulled out the spark plugs. I have dropped this manifold to the side, and you can see all four exhaust ports are clean on this one. No rust at all. Compare that to this side, and you can see that third port right there is rusted out. Get excited, because I have a special solution for that coming up in this video. And the eagle-eyed of you have probably already noticed and maybe even commented why it was so difficult to turn over and why it was making sounds earlier. I said I had pulled all the spark plugs, but I had only pulled them from the left side. So I was fighting half the compression of the engine while I was turning, and those whooshing sounds was air coming out of the valves. That was pretty fun. The next step is to pull all these rockers off, pull the rods, pull the valve lifters, and then we can start focusing on the camshaft. That's gonna be crazy. I have a whole brand new set of these for both sides. So the nut, the rocker, the little pivot in there, and the rod are all basically junk now. Good riddance if you ask me. <laughs> these are flat tappets. Let's see how they're wearing on this side. This one looks pretty good. I don't see much wear or anything. A lot of you saw these tappets and you informed me that flat tappets require oil with zinc. And they just don't sell oil with zinc in it anymore. Uh, and so it needs to have a zinc additive added to the oil. 
This was something I never would have even thought about. I never would have considered without your comments. So thank you for that. You're teaching me way more than I could have ever learned by myself just by doing this. Uh, that's why I love making these videos, so keep at it. But I, I know about the zinc now, so you can stop commenting about that. But everything else is on the table. Here we go. That's a crazy one. Look how curved it is. So this is why you need that zinc additive in there so that when the tappets go against the camshaft, they're going to be pushing so fast it's going to wear. These spin in their, their bores and as they spin they'll start developing a rounded wear pattern if there isn't enough zinc in the oil. That's not only on the valve lifter, the tappet, but also on the camshaft, which is the whole reason that I have to pull this camshaft out. That's the next, and I'm terrified, but really excited at the same time. Glad I didn't punch a hole in the bottom of the boat. How tragic would that be? I am not gonna lie, I have no clue what I'm supposed to do now. How do I get this thing off? Can I get this thing off? I've got no clue. It's times of pure desperation like this that I read the manual. Okay, the manual is not super helpful on this. All I really learned was that's called the torsional damper, and that's pretty much it. All right, I'm back from research, and I learned a lot. I don't have the right tool to pull this damper right now, but I bet you in about two minutes of your time, I will. In the meantime, I've got to pull out this crank bolt. That's the really tricky part, because I don't have an impact gun. This is the bolt I've been using to turn the engine. I need a sharp impact, like from an impact gun, to turn that bolt loose without turning the engine with it. What can you do when you need a sharp impulse? Hit it with a hammer. All right. Okay, it is day two, working in the build, getting this camshaft out. I gotta say, I'm getting pretty deadly with pulling this sole up. I think this one only took me like 10 minutes. I mean, you gotta move the couch and everything. It's a whole big deal. I went to the store and got what is hopefully the correct tool. This is a harmonic balancer puller. Very specific, so this should do the trick. Let's get this open, get it on there, and see if it pulls it. So now what I've got to do is turn this wrench on the hex part at the end. That's going to push this threaded rod in. And the only way for things to move is for this, the bolt it's attached to, and this T-fitting to move out. Yeah, I gotta make sure I catch it before it hits the inside of the hole there because I don't want this thing doing any kind of damage on any kind of part. Nothing to it but to do it. And there it is. All right, so we're in here now. This is the covering plate over the chain and the gears that control the timing for the entire engine. Looks like there are some bolts around the edge and there are also some sneaky bolts all the way at the bottom that I'm gonna have to take out. And then this thing should just come right off. And the sneaky ones, they're in there holding it from below. There's the last one. Let's see if this cover is just gonna pop off. <sighs> yep. And here it is, our very first look at the timing belt and gears. On these gears, there are tiny little dots. You can see one right there and right there. I need to spin the entire motor until these markings line up there and there. When I do that, they should be rotated to the correct point for reference. Almost there. I don't want to miss it. That's it. That dot and that dot are lined up perfectly, that's where this needs to be. And then I need to pull this wheel off and it'll take the chain with it. There we go! This is terrifying. This right here is our chocolate center. This is the filling that we've been working toward. Ah, uh, so much effort has gone toward getting to this camshaft. I believe that all I have to do now 
is pull it off. Oh my gosh. I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do. We are so close. I can pull it out that much. After that, it hits something. I think it hits something closer to this end of the block. I have read something that said the fuel pump might be an issue with this. Might as well pull it off and see. This could be our moment of triumph. <gasps> yes! It wants to come. <gasps> ah! This is so cool stuff! Oh god! You gave out words. How do they. Wow! I just. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The camshaft is out. Woo! That means we're about halfway done. This is incredible. I honestly didn't know if I was even going to be able to do this part of the job. Check this out. That is a whole camshaft out of an engine. I don't think I've ever actually seen one of these in person. Look at this. This is the reason that we're here. Look at how rounded over these lobes are. Look at that. That's supposed to be the pointy spot. That's supposed to come up as high as this does. And it's just nothing. That's why we needed to replace this entire camshaft, the lifters, the works because just replacing one part of the system would not be enough to keep it from wearing like this over and over and over again. Tomorrow, I can go and pick up a brand new camshaft and I can put it all back together. All right, now we gotta move on to the most exciting part, the scariest part, and by far the most expensive part. We've gotta put this engine back together. I've got a whole slew of brand new parts waiting in the wings. Let me show you. We've got a brand new camshaft. It matches up perfectly with the original one. I checked. This thing is going to work wonders. And just look at the definition on these lobes. This is what the old one was lacking. We've got brand new timing chain and gears. Double chain, just like the old one so it's not gonna fall apart anytime soon. And I introduced them last time, but they're still here. All the rods and rockers and some new gaskets to boot. Plus I got a whole brand new box of lifters. These things are beautiful. They're gonna be perfect for this camshaft. And no, I have not soaked these overnight. That's intentional. I'll walk you through it later. So we saw the price of this box last time. It came out to a $142. Now the price for the lifters, cam, and chain turned out to be $156. So that means all of these parts came out to less than $300. Here's the real piece of resistance. This is a brand new exhaust manifold. This cost more than all the rest of the parts combined. I saw a tiny little bit of rust and one of these exhaust ports on the one that's on the engine right now, that scared me. That could be a sign of hydro lock, and that could have been the one instance that sparked this whole cascade of problems. So, to play things safe, I bought a brand new one. This thing was $400. I couldn't have done that, honestly, without the money I've made off of YouTube. So, in a way, you guys have bought this for me, Thank you so much. That's an amazing thing I never thought would happen. So here are our parts. Ugh. We just gotta make them fit in the places they're supposed to. Okay, I need to take these old gaskets off and clean up the inside, make sure there's not even a speck of paint in there. These are much cleaner and less stuck than the other side was. That came off really without a hitch. And for the other side, now this one's tearing a little bit more, but still, I mean, that's only two pieces. And same thing for the timing belt cover surface needs to be completely smooth clean. All right, all the mating surfaces have been scraped within an inch of their lives. I didn't even show it, but even the ones uh, on the intake manifold. 
completely clean. No dirt, no gasket grime, little chunks, anything. They're all off. Really the next step is to put the brand new camshaft in. Yeah, this is gonna be exciting. Instead of assembly grease, I have this stuff, which was recommended to me by a friend who builds 454 engines for sprint cars. He says this stuff is even better than assembly grease. It's super thick, it stays in place, it mixes with the oil perfectly. I guess I have to uh, smear it all over all the lobes, the bearing surfaces, the gear, ah! and slide this thing in. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Carefully. That's it. This is gonna work so well. That's it. <laughs> the new camshaft is in the block. Okay, it's time to get the timing chain and gear on. I actually don't have a gear puller, so that one's gonna have to stay where it is. You can sue me if you want. We've gotta get this main cam gear on with the chain, and of course, it's gotta be lined up in the right position. So now is the perfect moment to try out my brand new toy, I mean tool. This is the first uh, torque wrench I've ever used. So I have it set to the right spec, I'm going to give this a try. Hey, that's pretty good. And that's good too. Easy. This is it. Look at all my brand new parts we're out to install. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. All right, here we go with the valve lifters. These are brand new. What a great surface on them. I'm gonna coat this surface with some of the same assembly lube that I put on the camshaft. Again, these have not been pre-filled with oil. This is following a valve lash setting technique by Midmo Marine Services on YouTube. Check out the video I've linked below because it is incredible. They know so much more about engines than I ever will. So I'm following their advice here. And now for the nuts. This is where this valve lash setting technique really takes off. So you need to check out that video in the description below after you watch this because it's awesome and I'm gonna be following it to a T. Now you gotta put on the covers and let's start with the timing chain cover. Oh my god, it's 3.11 in the morning. I think I'm going to get the dampener on and maybe the valve covers on tonight. And then I'm going to have to pack it up and do the rest tomorrow. To persuade it, I'm going to use my granddad's rubber mallet here. Unfortunately, he died about two years before I was able to buy the boat, but he would have thought it was so awesome. I've given up on trying to hammer the dampener back into place. That's uh, gonna require a specialized tool. To get things back in order for the night, I can put on these valve covers and permanently tighten them down. It'll get us closer to bed. <laughs> I am absolutely exhausted. And so is my light. I think it's time for both of us to recharge. Alright, it is day four down here in the bilge, and wow, last night was tough. Um, good news is, I finally got the right kind of tool to actually install the harmonic balancer correctly. I rented this from uh, Advanced Auto Parts. so. Now that I have this, let's give that another shot. All right, that's on there. 
And the pulley is pretty easy to line up. It has its own flange, and if you get one bolt in, then the other two will go in. It is water pump time. Supply hose back in place. Let's get these belts on. Okay, now is as good as time as any to get the fuel pump, which is right there, back where it's supposed to go, which is right in there. You can probably just barely see there's a rod. That rod is touching the camshaft up inside, and as it moves, it hits a lobe and it goes up and down and up and down and pumps the fuel pump. I need to pull out that plug, push the rod up, and get the fuel pump in. That's a little bit of a magic trick. Let's see if I can do it. That's the rod. We gotta figure out a way to get it to stick up in there long enough to get this fuel pump in. Here's an idea. What if we put some of this sticky stuff on here first? All right, that's in there. That is a fuel pump in place. The time has come to reattach the intake manifold. I'm going to go over the inside one last time with a fine tooth comb, not even a speck of bright blue aftermarket paint is going to get in this engine and mess it up. I promise you that. So while I'm doing this, I think it's a good time to talk about theories I have about these engines. So I have the original manuals. They say they were built by Marine Power. Also, uh, Chris Craft sometimes takes credit for building these engines. Either way, they are 454 engines that have been modified slightly to be more resilient in a marine environment. Sometime in the last 30 years, I believe that a previous owner needed to replace one or more of these exhaust manifolds, just like I'm going to do in a couple of minutes. And when they did that, I think they weren't able to find original Chris Craft slash Marine Power manifolds. Lucky for them, however, Crusader makes a marinized 454 big block, and the manifolds fit on perfectly. However, the original Chris Craft or Marine Power engines were probably gray. I haven't found any kind of color picture from back then of the engines themselves. But either way, a bright blue Crusader exhaust manifold was not going to fit in. So what did they do? I think they repainted both of these engines blue to match the manifolds with very low quality, not heat resistant paint. You can see it's even over the rubber hoses here. It's over nuts, bolts, it's over this label. Don't hold me to this. But in two or three years after I've forgotten how much hard work this was, I might take it apart all over again and repaint all the parts even brighter blue. The patient is ready for the injection. A very light bead down the sides of the block here. Spread that out later. And a few dots to hold on the gaskets when they go in place. All right, I think this silicone is tacked up just enough to hold the gaskets in place as I put the manifold where it's supposed to go. Before I do that, though, I have to put a little dollop of silicone in each of these little corner pockets. So let's get out the gun and go for gold. And here go the gaskets. Uh, manifold. In place. Now there is a very specific order in which these bolts have to be torqued down. And of course, a specific torque they have to be torqued to. So I'm gonna be following both. Here we go. And reattach this thermistor stack. Next step is the distributor. This is a complicated piece of electromechanical engineering. I only know enough to get by on this. So I've dropped a really great video below that's going to explain a lot more than I can. I'm gonna get this thing in and that's one more step closer to a completed rebuilt engine. Well, the pump is in place. Now I take it back to top dead center. Now let's put 
this carburetor back on. Carefully bend the copper fuel pipe back into place. And in goes this tiny little fuel filter, last resort. Now let's reattach the throttle cables. Done. Now I've been dreading the next step because it is messing with the exhaust manifolds. That one over there is the one that's staying. This is the one that's being replaced. I'm going to reinstall the one that's staying right now, get all the spark plugs on that side in, and then we'll figure out what to do with this one. Put the new gasket on. Close this thing up. This thing is heavy as hell. Ah, got it. This is like wrestling a bull while playing chess. I've done one of those things. I'll leave it to you to guess. Okay, I have secured this exhaust manifold to the block. I have hooked up this hose and this hose. Time to put the spark plugs in and route their cables to the distributor. We are so close to being done here, but we still have to replace this exhaust manifold because if this is leaky, this could undo all the hard work that we've just done. Pull the last couple of bolts, connecting it to the block, and then I think I can pull this out. And tomorrow, we can reinstall the new one and get it going. Okay, this is the sink or swim moment. About to pull off those two bolts, see if I can get this manifold and riser off. Let's do this thing. Oh my God. It is very good that I bought a replacement for this. There is so much liquid sludge. That's not just oil, that's water too. And this could be, dare I say, this is the start of the chain reaction. As far as everything that was broken in there and everything we replaced, I think this is where it started. This is good. So now all I have to do is pull this riser off and I can go to bed. We've made it to four in the morning again, two days in a row. This isn't going to negatively impact my health at all. That's that. And that brings us to the question of these two lovely pieces of cast iron. Old and new come together at last. I've got to take out those plugs and put these fittings in their place. It's going to be fun. Straight to the big guns. Oh, nope, there, it moved. Oh my gosh. Uh, and now it just comes out like nothing, you know, like it wasn't just put in with the might of Zeus. Mm. Got it. And there are our two offending caps off of the new manifold. Who remembers this angle iron from opening up the intake manifold? Yeah, that went well. Let's try it on this. Nope, that's a nope. That's a hard nope. This is another great time to remind you not to do anything I do without doing your own research first. Entertainment purposes only. And if it wasn't abundantly obvious, I'm not a mechanic, but that just worked. Oh gosh. Yeah! Also, don't worry, I hate this carpet. It's going eventually. The more stains, the more incentive I have to get rid of it. This last one could be tough because there is no place to leverage from. I just gotta grip and hope. And if it doesn't work, I'm kinda hosed. Oh, that's working! That is working! all fittings off the old manifold. As for cleaning the gasket surfaces of this new manifold, I'm gonna start with what seems the easiest, a razor knife. Let's see if any of this paint, yes it will, is gonna chip off. 
every now and then you get into like a really good angle and just take off like a ton at a time. It is so satisfying. Now for this surface. All gasket surfaces are clean. Let's get these fittings where they belong. That should be snug for a generation. So now we've got our freshly cleaned and mounted manifold. Got to connect it to the old riser. Now, funny story. When I ordered this manifold, I also ordered the correct gasket to go between them. That did not arrive in the mail for a myriad of reasons. So, I'm going to use my own that I made using the uh, steel part that came with the old gasket and two custom cut out pieces. Brand new gasket is where it's supposed to be. Now for my next few strength, I'm going to lift this 85 pound riser and manifold into place. That is on. I just need to tighten it down. And spark plugs for this side. Everything's in place and it should be ready to go. So here's what's gonna happen. I've got my brother Joseph here. He's gonna help me be a second set of eyes and ears. Uh, he's going to be standing over there with the camera, and I'm going to be at the helm, and I'm going to crank this engine. But when it does start up, I'm going to have to be listening very carefully for any weird sounds, knocks, um, anything that would indicate the timing is just off. And I'm going to have to make that call in the first couple of seconds, um, whether or not I'm going to uh, just kill it and start from scratch. If it does sound okay at that point, I'm going to take it up to about 2,000 RPM, and we're going to leave it there for 20 minutes or so. Um, slowly modulating it to break it in, and that should be it. day I don't even know it's been weeks since I started uh, I think just a few minutes I can get this started up this is a new coil I've got a really good feeling that replacing this coil and maybe the distributor cap is going to get this engine started let's give it a shot <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh man, we need to get a timing light on this thing. Now I'm gonna take it up to 2,000 RPM for 20 minutes. The next step is, I'm sorry I'm yelling, I'm just used to yelling at this point. The next step is to replace the oil and get some more zinc additive in there. 
because now that we've broken in that camshaft, there are gonna be little tiny shards of metal, and that's the way it's supposed to be, wearing the, uh, the camshaft and the lifters together, get that good wear pattern going. But that means there's gonna be metal shaving. So we gotta get that out of there, get fresh oil in, replace the filter especially, but I'm not gonna show that to you. This engine works. How amazing is that? Whew. I'm leaving it right there. Thank you so much for watching. This has been an adventure. Could not have done without you.